uh, Lee Jae-young here in the studio. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for calling me. I believe that uh, you've been asked this question uh, 50,000 times already <laughs> in the past almost two weeks uh, yeah. since uh, June 13th. But uh, what was your sort of uh, reaction or analysis after these uh, results were known? Well, thank you for saying it was a uh, substantial defeat instead of humiliating defeat. <laughs> I, I saw that you sort of yeah, changed the vocabulary. Yeah, yes. it was a humiliating defeat. Um, I can't think of any elections that we've experienced uh, that we had gone through this type of, you know, uh, uh, sweeping defeat mm -hmm. again. And uh, any analysis at this point is, I think, unnecessary because okay. I think message was so clear. Um, uh, I, I call it maybe it was a perfect storm. Mm. I mean, there was a very high uh, approval rate for the President Moon. Um, along with the uh, the day before summit between Trump and Kim Jong Un, which ended, I think it was quite, you know, good in a way, and also there was huge sentiment out there to punish uh, my party uh, for what we have not been able to do over the past couple of years or even more. So uh, I think this local election really showed the sentiment out there that mm -hmm. you know people. Not only wanted to support this current government, but really wanted to show that, you know, the conservative side, especially my party, needs to uh, really get our acts together and uh, and 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 reform. So, in your view, it wasn't just strictly this uh, mood of reconciliation with uh, North Korea, uh, and or it wasn't just the idea that I guess the sentiment that uh, the uh, the conservative party did not fully uh, repent. I guess is the word you would say in Korea for for the um, the the so-called sins of the past uh, ad administrations. But it was all a combination of this. Do you feel that election strategy was also because some people have said that uh, perhaps some um, things like the slogan of um, do you want to turn the entire country over to leftists? I guess that's the uh, the broad translation of that, or some of the uh, rhetoric by the past leaders that uh, that might have also been an effect on that. Well, I think little things add up, right? And uh, I think what you're saying was all of the above uh, sort of worked against us at this okay. point. Uh, when it comes to sort of uh, the negative rhetorics uh, that people think uh, that was not helpful, uh, but I've always said... Uh, if you look at some of those messages and if you really dissect it, mm -hmm. some of the messages were actually meaningful. Mm -hmm. I think Messenger was not that trustworthy, from at least from the voters' okay. point of view. And that was one of the major problems that we had. Uh, but the mood, the peace mood itself, I think was, uh, I'm not, I don't think that was necessarily bad for us, but it was how we act, mm -hmm. reacted mm -hmm. to that mood or understanding the situation, how we sort of described the whole uh, the process that might have been uh, sort of against uh, what you know the general citizens were thinking right. about. So I think everything sort of added up to you know come up come about this type of result. It really felt like a great opportunity in the sense that usually these kind of elections are a referendum on, right. on the government, on the on the president. Right. Uh, there were some seemingly kind of uh, ripe. Issues like the economy, you know, things like the minimum wage and, and uh, the stagnation in job growth that um, just didn't seem to really catch fire, right, as far as the messaging. Absolutely. <clears throat> and in fact, throughout the elections, we tried to bring those subjects up uh, to the surface, but we failed. And again, it goes to whether the messenger was right. And when I say messenger, it was not really about the one the leader, one leader yeah, but yeah. it was the whole group. And, and you talk about the repent itself, but... You know, that itself is also a, whether we did enough or we did not do enough, uh, that itself is a question. Yeah. So we don't know what is enough. But I think one of the clear thing is that uh, the people who should repent, uh, I think the people look at it as a repent is when you change those people who are responsible. And when the same guys who brought this type of, you know, uh, uh, sin, uh -huh. to our party uh, and remained and remained in control to the public it seemed like it was you know hollow hall maybe the 
aftermath of this has resulted in, of course, the, the resignation of the chairman, mm-hmm. Hong Jun-pyo. Uh, now we have uh, Kim Sung-tae, who was the uh, floor leader, yep. is the floor leader. He is sort of kind of the acting chief. He's trying to set up some kind of a reform or emergency uh, committee to deal with this. But right away, we've already seen, I think a lot of people have noticed that perhaps there are some... Uh, the old factional feuds have come back again. The the first year term, uh, the first term lawmakers calling for the ouster of the uh, current leadership and the old guard, uh, them then being counter accused of being kind of in cahoots with the the pro park coalition. How, how do you think uh, the the this maze is going to be navigated? You think in the next uh, few weeks? Well, I think it's one of the major challenges we have right now is that. Um, only way we can show the change, reform, is through election. Um, now, we have that election already, but the election that I'm talking about is the general Intra-party. election. Oh, okay. I'll be so election. that's two years away. So without that's the only point where we're going to be able to show the people that we have really repent mm-hmm. and that we are really about to change. Uh, but without that process, it's going to be very difficult to express uh, in a very tangible way, right? Which means that again, it's not it's not just going to be next few weeks, but it's going to be very difficult next few months, in mm. my opinion. I hope it doesn't last that long. But at this point, uh, looking at the the messages coming out from the parliament uh, and internal people, uh, that it seems that it's going to take a quite a while for us to sort of, you know, get things together, put our acts together, and uh, go forward. So when we talk about, uh, you mentioned the next few months uh, right. as far as some of the processes and the proposals by uh, the le- the current uh, temporary leadership right now, including disbanding the party headquarters, uh, changing the name. Uh, I know you've also heard that uh, some members of the public sometimes feel these are sort of things that every party does, whether it's the uh, the opposition parties or the, the Democratic Party and, and the uh, former conservative parties, that this rebranding um, doesn't necessarily essentially change or reform the essence of the party that could regain the public trust. Are there other, um, I guess, strategies in place here that uh, could prove more successful in the next few months? Well, I personally uh, think that immediately following the uh, election last two weeks ago, I've been asserting that uh, the party needs party itself needs to be uh, dismantled. Uh, but now the Kim Jong Tae is talking about disbanding the the central right. Uh, headquarters. I don't think it's enough. Okay. And I also said that in order for us to rebuild ourselves, we we need to go beyond just LKP, but we need to sort of put all the conservative right side, right conservative spectrum of people and put that into sort of mixer and mix it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we need to have a broader picture of what you know our right wing uh, conservative. Uh, sp- political spectrum is going to look like for the next few years or years to come. We need to have some grand strategy. Right. We don't have that right now in our reform strategy that's been announced uh, last week. And another one is uh, I think we need to really have a new generation of political leaders uh, to be um, invited to our party leadership. That wasn't successful at all, especially in the local election we just had right. also. So in order to do that, but especially in the third part, when we invite the new generation of leadership, that means we need to make an empty space. <laughs> and this empty space meaning that some people who are in there needs to, you know... Step aside. Step aside. And that itself hasn't been that successful, I don't think. So, again, going back to my first comment that uh, I think the real reform is going to be only be able to show uh, at around the general election, which is two years away, or well, actually about a year and ten months away, uh, and the process itself will probably start a year and six months away from now. And around that time, I think we'll be able to show that the conservative party and conservative side of the entire political right. spectrum has really gone through a uh, sort of uh, this self-finding you know, process mm-hmm. and be able to say that we are really ready to take on new challenges for new time, new future and whatnot. A lot of comparisons made to the Democratic Party 2006 suffering a massive uh, right. defeat in the 2006 local elections, then uh, former President Noh Hyun uh, unpopular, and how it's taken them a decade to really uh, recover from that. Obviously, you're thinking of a more um, accelerated timetable uh, than, than one um, a decade in the wilderness. And I, I guess uh, what you're saying now is that uh, 
those reforms have to take place maybe at a faster rate? Well, if you look at 2006, they've suffered a massive loss. But then again, they were able. They show the start. Uh, they start to show the the, the rebuilding uh, by next election, because their general election in 2010 was quite you know impressive in mm-hmm. Seoul area. Mm-hmm. If you look at it mm-hmm. back, so you know it took them 10 years for regaining the you know government as a you know bringing new president. Right. But at the local level, it started already uh, a few years ago. So when I say, you know, our timetable is short, yeah, because I think we really need to show the people that we're ready and we be able to uh, see how people or general election, uh, general people or general citizen will react to the, our reform uh, next time, which is two years from now. And after that, there will be another general uh, local election. So there are a series of, you know, points where we be able to uh, sort of get our test right. scores, right? Uh, but uh, in order for that to happen, it needs to happen now. But again, the challenge is uh, the people right now who's in power, they haven't been able to show real, you know, real truth or real attitude toward reform because they haven't been able to say that, okay, I'm about to mm-hmm. step aside. Well, uh, we do thank you very much for joining us, uh, giving us your insights uh, uh, on what's going on with the uh, conservative movement, and hopefully uh, have you back again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.